All right, welcome to another episode of the Guild of playthrough of Factions. We still got one more mission left. It is this Kurzik mission. In order to do it, I am finishing up my uh, Kurzik 10,000 faction farm. And I hope, I'm hoping if I run this challenge mission, the Ultram Ruins, it should finish it up. Uh, I'm going to be going Fever Dreams. Probably the most satisfying build of the mesmers this, this is one of my favorite builds is is uh going fever dreams fragility and if i get this i'll hit to ten thousand. i'll be able to do the final mission and then i should be able to turn in my book that will give me the luxon farm of a hundred thousand i think so i think it gives you at least thirty thousand faction for turning in a completed book uh, then I'll be able to get those PvE skills. I suppose I should actually unlock the PvE skills for Kurzix, uh, because I've got the higher level, and I think they they uh, scale for level of your faction with either the Kurzix or Luxons, depending on which skill you unlock. So I guess what I should do is get the 10,000 faction. I should... Um, I should get the PvE skills. Then I'm going to do the Kurzik, last Kurzik quest. And then turn it in to the... Turn my book into the Luxon Bard. And get that uh, Luxon faction up to 100,000. I guess I don't need to do that anymore though, do I? I don't know what I'm going to do. I might just totally abandon the Luxons at this point. Because actually I do need to get my Kurzik title up anyway. I guess to make this a true like nostalgia build as if it's like my first time running it, I should go ahead and do everything on the Luxon side, shouldn't I? Yeah, I might do that actually. Just to keep with the nature of the build, of the, of the run rather. So this challenge mission is... I think a little more entertaining than the Luxon mission. I feel like the Luxon mission is a bit boring. It's just kind of waiting around, uh, kind of mindlessly waiting for enemies to attack you. While this one requires a little bit of strategy, which I don't know if I'm executing the strategy well or not, but either way, it, it requires a little bit of, of strategy to know which routes to take so basically the time is counting down and of course when the time runs down it finishes but while i'm while i'm uh fighting these enemies i should be picking up these chunks of amber each chunk gives you 15 faction each enemy gives you one faction but whenever you kill a boss like this boss that respawns it adds a minute to the time remaining so I guess this mission also theoretically could last forever if you're fast enough, if you're optimal enough. The thing is that enemies get harder. They slow you down a little bit more as you're going. And it's just generally harder to keep farming those bosses because you keep getting stopped by enemies. But I'm going to try and go as long as possible at least to get to that 10,000 mark so I can do the next mission. I did run the mission I did run this challenge mission a little bit off recording because I didn't want like an hour and a half of of uh just running this this challenge mission over and over. Although it is interesting to play this level and try to come up with the most optimal build for it. But as we are running henchmen, I think you know, there's only so much optimal building we can do in terms of choosing which henchman to bring and what my skill bar could be. Definitely, it'll be fun to try and run this and farm with heroes. I bet you can just totally optimize the heroes and bring the right skills, bring the right combination, and just totally farm this over and over. I'm getting kind of stuck up here. There's actually two or three other bosses 
in the area and I'm I'm kind of stuck over here because there's so many enemies bombarding me right now. So maybe I maybe I killed the first boss a little too fast. I think every boss that you kill spawns new enemies because at first I was fighting just um, wardens. Now I after I killed the first boss, I'm fighting dredge, I'm fighting outcasts, I'm fighting all kinds of people. And here's a question. Are these outcasts the same outcasts we fought in the Jade Sea? Or are these Kurzic outcasts? That's an interesting thing to think about. I'm going to go to the other side of the map. And there should be another boss on this side. Already got about 200, 200 or 300 um, faction. This is a very fast way to collect faction, I think. Pushing control. Where is the boss at? Generally, you always want to be working your way towards the boss. Uh, so that you're not wasting time. Because although enemies give you faction, and that's great. You get more faction by just keeping... Farming the bosses over and over because the time extends. These guys are dropping too fast. I can't get my full hex. I suppose if it's not a caster, I should just use fragility. I mean, uh, who all uses? I, I cause weakness and deep wound. I think sin causes burning. Lucas causes dazed, I believe. Nika. Oh, I also call it dazed also, don't I? Nika has like poison, bleeding. Nika's got tons of of uh of um what am I trying to say? Of conditions. And I think Aiden also has some dis some poison. So it's pretty with these henchmen I've got pretty high condition conditions uh going on high number of conditions it, that's why i brought mantra of frost warden of season no no who one of the elementalists uses maelstrom i brought mantra of frost for that we doing yeah see i'm already up to 8.5 this will give us another extra minute a lot of time. I might have to run this twice, actually. Mandra Frost is also good against Necromancers because a lot of Necromancer spells, they do cause cold damage. I think probably Air, Air Attune, uh, Mantra of Air, Mantra of uh, Frost, Mantra of Earth are all pretty good. To use because multiple classes cause those damage like um ritualist for example uses a lightning damage but so by bringing that in a heavy ritualist area you're getting some defense for that i guess there'd be no reason to bring multiple mantras like of every element that would be a little too overkill another reason why i like this game is just something like that knowing knowing the type of skills that they do in the area you can prepare ahead of time even though i don't usually do it as well as i should kind of just like okay let's see how it goes i feel like in other in other games and in other mmos especially people are looking for that one build that they can use for everything for all content and I, I think having that mentality is what really kills the longevity of enjoying the game. Being able to, depending on the situation, change it up. And in one area, your build might be great. And in another area, it might just be totally countered. It's part of what makes this game so great. And I might be wrong, but I feel like uh, Guild Wars 2 is missing is is missing that aspect a little bit. 
where there's so such a investment in the gear that kind of pigeonholes you into a certain build. Unless you're just unbelievably wealthy with all of the legendary gears and stuff. I'm not I'm not too I didn't play too much of Guild Wars 2 if I'm being honest. But that's one of the feelings that I had when I played that game. You know what I'm thinking about doing? Is actually doing a short series of playing Guild Wars 2 from a perspective of a Guild Wars 1 player. Not to like hate on the game at all, but yeah, if you'd be interested in that, of like my opinion on Guild Wars 2, reacting to Guild Wars 2, um, yeah, I could do like a mini series of that, so. If you'd rather me just stick to Guild Wars 1, that's fine also. But I'd just be curious in the chat if you guys are like, Guild Wars 1 player reacts to... I thought about doing various games like that. And I was thinking the other day, actually. I played so much Guild Wars 1 back in the day that I actually missed out on some of the probably pretty good games that came out around the same time. Or at least within 10 years of the release of Guild Wars 1. And because of that, it might be pretty cool to go back and see what I missed out on. So anyway, if you're interested in, in, in me playing other games, I'm probably not ready to do that yet because I still have to do Nightfall and Eye of the North. But something to think about. Something to think about. Okay, how are we doing? We got 2 minutes, 45 seconds. I've got almost 9k. Can we get another 1k? Probably not the rate we're going. But we're going to get close. I can probably get one more boss. I'm going to head back over to that monk boss. Fever Dreams really counters that monk. So he went down really fast that first time. So we should have uh, essentially about three minutes left, I think. If I can get over there in time. I didn't bring many enchantments. I This is kind of a wasted skill, the uh, illusion of weakness. But these outcasts, necromancers and stuff always use that disenchantment. Well, nice. They're all grouped up. This is going to be huge damage. Watch this. Boom. Love it. Love it. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to that boss in time. I guess I just have a minute and a half left. Whoops. Yeah, I think I over aggroed. All right, this is the end. This will be the end of our of our challenge. Wow, I didn't expect to actually fail, like actually wipe on this. Oh, obsidian, obsidian flesh. That's what's getting us. I need to use my AOE hex. Even though obsidian flex, obsidian flesh makes them not targetable. If I can cast it on someone near them, it, the hex should go on them, I believe. Ooh. We aggroed some more. Let me pick up this amber before the time runs out. Okay. Oh, there's a mender here. This is who we need to take out. There we go. There's that damage. Heck yeah. Recast this. And I should actually be recasting Fever Dreams because it will in it will um apply dazed whenever they have uh when they have three two or more conditions. Like that. Boom. What it someone's disenchanting him. Anyway, so we get 425 faction for finishing. Oh, man, I'm 500 short. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to rerun this to get the 10,000. And I'm just going to I'm just gonna skip ahead to that because at this point, you kind of see how it goes. I'm not going to change my build. I think that was pretty good. Uh, I just need an extra 500. So next time you see me, I will have 10,000. 
All right, I managed to get exactly the 10,000 that I needed and I can accept or can complete the befriending the Kurzix quest. So, let's talk to Kanzu Helser. Nice, 10,000 experience, 700 gold. Got a skill point off of that. And Defenders of the Forest, I believe we need. Head to Drazak Thicket to gather volunteers. Klaus, Lieber, and Ex Redemptor. Berta. Take three of them to the grove. Do you think you can handle it? Okay. I remember this. We are going to transfer transform them into some juggernauts, which we fought when we helped the Luxons earlier. Get a, oh, I get 1250 for this. Nice. All right. Now that I have the 10,000, uh, I'm just going to do it, I guess. I want to talk to the faction rewards. So I know I didn't do it optimally. I originally was planning to go back to the Luxons and just spend it there because I was thinking I would get the PVE skills under Luxon. I just feel like it would be a waste. I mean, I'm wasting faction either way. And I think it would be a waste for me to get the Luxon skills at this point because the, the Kurzix are going to be more powerful. There's actually three that I want to get. I want to get Shadow Sanctuary. Uh, of course, I want to get Ether Nightmare. And I also want to get Signet of Corruption. I feel like Signet of Corruption directly works with this build, actually. Um, I looked at them last episode, so I'm just going to buy them. I'm going to buy Ether Nightmare. Yeah, so I lost. <laughs> yeah, it's going to trigger some of you people, I think. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to get the next one. Oops. Oopsie. Uh, let's get Signet of Corruption. So I think I can equip both of them. Ether Nightmare. Target foe loses 7 energy for each point of energy loss with that foe. And all foes in the area suffer minus 1 to generate for 10 seconds. That's a 25 second cooldown. That's pretty rough. And this one, target foe and all... Is this based on... Yeah, why is the damage so low? Target foe and all nearby foes take 27 damage for... Oh, it's for each affected foe suffering. Oh, it's more of an energy management one. That'll replace energy tab. Ether Nightmare will replace... Something. Um... Yeah, let me just replace this and then i'm going to bring a signet of capture just in case for this mission yep sorry sorry everyone i wasted some action oopsie let's <laughs> let's go on so for this one i need to go to drazak thicket luckily i got loot guardis conservatory last mission or last episode and i think it's going to be closer to go there from here I'm essentially running the same build now, but now whenever they're suffering from a condition or hex. Actually, this damage is this damage is no condition, right? Target foe and all new right foes take 27 set damage. So boom. That's that's guaranteed damage. The amount of energy I get is based on each foe suffering a condition or hex. That's a lot of energy great it might be nice to have arcane echo actually for this he uh, hex spell because it lasts 10 seconds a 25 second cooldown hmm. because i am going to get a lot of energy back let's just try it like this if i feel like i have plenty of energy i i might replace ether feast with arcane echo okay so we're going why is it telling me to go out this way? Is this right? Yeah, this is right. Yeah, Jurassic Thicket. Yeah, so it comes it comes down here. I might as well get the get the blessing. So I'm back on the Kurzik side now. No more Luxons. Sorry, Team Luxoners. I betrayed. I'm a turncoat. Bellinger's Watcher. Earth Magic Ranger. 
Elemental. That might be good. No, I want the 50 max health. Guaranteed benefit. This guy has a repeatable quest, I believe. Yeah. Not too concerned about that. Let's go. There's There should be a number of bosses here. Maybe even a new Mesmer boss. I think there's definitely another Necromancer boss. I'm going to have to make another video of capturing the skills of Echo Vault Forest, I guess. Again, as I said, I've got some unfinished business in Tantha. I'm not really in a huge rush to, to go to the Alona yet. pretty good spell it really boosts our damage doesn't it because hmm. now we do we do spike damage and now we do aoe degeneration that's pretty insane i'm going the wrong way i need to go down here Really cool scenery. Look at that. Let's get a little shot of this. Yeah, that looks awesome. Okay. Yeah, the 27 damage, AoE damage is not that great, is it? It's not a nice cooldown. Oh, that would be, this would be good on a Keystone build, wouldn't it? Keystone Signet build. That would be nice. I would just need to make sure uh, someone on my team casts hexes or uh, uses conditions. Just for the damage. And then the interrupt and damage applied from Keystone Signet. That would be a pretty big spike from this. The right way. Yeah. This is a pretty hefty quest, I guess. I guess I'm not going to be able to do the mission. I don't know if I'll be able to do the mission this episode or not. I thought this. I thought after I get the 10,000 faction, it would just be a matter of going to the next mission area. But... This is a pretty hefty quest. And we gotta keep them alive, so we gotta protect them too. Okay. I don't like that whenever I organize my quest log, they always open back up. And this is all foes in the area. It's such a huge radius. For Ether Nightmare. Seven. Seven health degeneration. That's crazy. Oh, there's a gardener here. The old switch target. There we go. This, this team build does lots of single target damage. Tons of single target damage. I think I'm really the only AoE except for me. Yeah, me and Sin. Sin and I do a lot of AoE damage. Everyone else just does single target damage or condition spam. Echovolve Forest is so cool. The sky is just um, just a, uh, what do you call that? 
thatched roof of branches. Archer Signet would be good on a condition build, I think. I got a, a second glimpse to, to glimpse that Archer Signet. It looked like it does something like increases, yeah. Conditions you apply while wielding a bow last 100%. It doubles the length of the condition. And all you really need to be is wielding a bow. So technically, technically, I could use, any class could use that elite while they're using conditions, they just need to make sure they're holding a bow and then it'll apply 100% duration. That's kind of fun to, that would be a fun thing to play with. Like a necromancer running archer signet and doing super heavy condition spam. Be interesting. Wow, there's already another priest over here. Can I get multiple blessings? Let's see what's this one. Rent. And what if I do this? Oh, I can get both of them. That's crazy. I already have one. Brower Academy. Am I not in Drazic Thicket yet? Oh no, I'm in Melandry's Hope right now. No wonder it's so weird. So there's another outpost here. Brower Academy. Cool. All right, Brower Academy. Looks like there's some quests here. Collector. Bills. I'm not too interested in quests right now. I want to get to the mission area. Let's just keep running this build. I'm a little bit underwhelmed with Signet of Corruption because... Although it does it does have a nice radius too. This is nearby foes. It's not I thought it was adjacent foes for a second. More More quests. So these are all opportunities to get faction. Yes, this is the one we want. Uh your mesmer attributes raised by one. Boom. Now we do twenty two damage. This one. Dual Master Vaughn. Alright. I'm sure it's interesting. Alright, now we're in Drazic Thicket. Step closer to the mission. I want to at least get to the next mission area in this episode. We got... Oh, nice interrupt. Who interrupts me? Uh, Earth Warden of the Mind, that's who did it. Let's take out this guy first. There. Find who's clumped up. These guys. Yes, you're getting fever dreamed. Oof. Love the damage. Yeah, I need to use Signet of Corruption. I need to remember that that gives me, um, it gives me energy. I don't even know if that's necessarily a great Signet for Necromancers, honestly. Because Necromancers already have Soul Reaping. Necromancer is usually the least, like, necessary profession to have energy management. It's already built in. I don't know. What do you think? Is Signet of Corruption 
better for a mesmer or necromancer? I feel like there's other there's a lot of other necromancer skills you would want to choose. Get out of this. There we go. Ah. They're so good with the interrupts, the A the AI. Like almost unfairly good. My players abuse them so much on the heroes. I kind of wish Ether Nightmare stole energy. It didn't just remove energy. I don't think that would be a too OP feature. Gosh. Bad damage, man. It's crazy that that costs three, or it has three second casting time. Really, Ether Nightmare can only be used by Mesmers then, because three seconds is an eternity for other classes. I don't know what. What do you think are the best um, PVE skills in factions? The ranger one's pretty good. The triple shot. I loved that one. Probably everyone will choose the warrior one. The, oh my gosh. The hundred armor, party wide armor, unremovable armor buff. But what's your second best? Cause that's, that's probably easily the best. Let's be honest. A hundred free armor for the entire party. That's relatively spammable maintainable there's klaus he's the first I haven't found a boss yet have i interesting take care of these guys Nice. That's the damage I'm looking for. Ornate shield. I don't think I liked that one. Yeah, I didn't like that shield. It's too small. Ooh. I like picking up the cane because they give iron ingots. Oh. Or steel ingots. For years now, I've been cowered behind my father, he's looking for a way to prove himself. I see. Let's do it. So he knows he's going to turn into a juggernaut, right? I know I'm making the right decision. This is the first time in my life I've never felt sure of myself. Good for you, you know? He's making a big sacrifice for his people. And he feels like he's going to be able to do some good with this sacrifice. Be more like Klaus. Klaus is team player. Eighty-three damage. Wow, that does tons of damage, and that's free. Eighty-three damage. No, no uh, condition. Non-conditional, guaranteed damage when casting a spell. That's that's pretty good. Is my stats right now 17 illusion magic. That's huge. Still no bosses, huh? Oh my gosh.
already got like an extra 1500 faction from doing this in the grand scheme of things yeah i lost 6000 lux in faction but it wasn't that valuable i could have turned them into amber i guess and sold it for but the amber or sorry uh jade but honestly like that, that's only 300 bucks a piece i'm not too worried about that what's this pain hungry gaki uh, not a boss there's lieber Get these guys. There we go. Good, I got the energy off. There's the dragon moss. Finally, we can complete that quest. Um, which one was it? Long. No. A lot of gaki flute. Oh, I never turned that in. Huh. This one. Yeah. We can we completed it so that's an extra like 1500 faction right there from completing both of those i didn't need to run the uh i didn't re need to run that mission another time i guess oh well good day blah 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 so it's time is it very well let me say farewells to my wife oh they're saying goodbyes wow this is a touching one the first guy was a uh, kind of a uh, outcast and wanted to prove himself this guy's making a arguably a bigger sacrifice leaving his wife his family to become a brutal juggernaut very touching right there should be one more um x redeemer berta Oh, I haven't been paying attention to make sure that they stay alive. Need to be careful not to over aggro. Jeez, that's a far away place. How many? I got 25 of these victory tokens. Oh, he needs to know that she moves on and remarries after he's gone. He cares about her. Oh, they're still talking to each other. Whoops, I didn't mean to cast that yet. Seems like the minions should be affected by hexes. That's a little OP. At least I think they're not. Oh, there's two ritualist bosses here. I think they dropped green items, so let's go ahead and get them. The tune was Song Kai, and what's the other guy drop? Signet of Souls by the look of it, maybe. 125 faction apiece, like that. Alright, they're getting... They're getting destroyed. I over aggroed. Keep Klaus alive. Klaus and Lieber, please stay alive. There we go. Jeez. The spirit? No, no, it's the dragon moss. The dragon moss has shatterstone. It just does crazy damage. Watch this. Oh, not bad. Yeah. Okay, let's regain some energy, regain some health. That was a little bit hairy. Am I even going the right way? Yeah, I need to cut around here. I don't need to fight these guys. I think this takes me to the next mission area, right? The Eternal Grove, is that the name of it? So with this, I will have completed
completed or scouted out almost all the area of Ka of Kanta. All I need to do now is go to Xingjie Island. And I bet you I'm pretty close to Canton Explorer. Yeah, I'm 41%. I don't know what areas I'm missing. I didn't go everywhere in the city. I know that there's still some dark areas here. The undercity and that and all that. The last guy. Oh no, I don't know who that is. Stupid Maelstrom. Maelstrom is really good. I don't know why I've never run Maelstrom. I should do that as a Mesmer Elementalist. Maelstrom and Chaos Storm is a really great combo, actually. I might do that. Run Echo. Echo, Arcane Echo, Maelstrom, and Chaos Storm. That would be... That would be a lot of damage. Ah, there's that Obsidian. There we go. Luckily, Ether Nightmare will affect him. All right, here we go. Last bit. We're almost there. This is the home stretch. Do I have to fight these guys? Feel like. Nice. Thought I was going to aggro. And we get Bezer Wingstorm. I think. Oh, he's just got Crippling Anguish. Never mind. He is going to drop a green item for us. Watch this. Oh, no. Gothic Axe. Not bad. Purple Gothic Axe. Could use that for um, boss. Of course, it's required. Required. What is that? 11. That's a bit expensive, but the Gothic Axe looks really cool. Look at that. Gothic Axe is awesome. Probably one of the best Axe skins in the game, if you ask me. If you're asking me. What are Gaki? Are they are they made up enemies from from Guild Wars or do they have some sort of a like cultural significance? Never heard of a Gaki. Like, I know Giren are from Korean and Japanese culture. But, yeah, I bet Gaki must be some, some um, not real, obviously, but some, like, known mythological creature. Alright, there's a time I respected House Redem Respected Redemptor. Oh, was a Respected Redemptor. Physics from all houses came together to listen to my sermons, but then I failed my people shame like gods. Allowing, ah, so he got kicked out. He wants to regain his honor or her honor. Get this once again in favor of the gods of my people. I gotcha. I hear that. Well, luckily we're right outside of this grove, so. Good positioning. Okay, well, we made it to the eternal grove. Uh, there should be a cutscene here, I believe. And then, next episode, we'll do this mission and complete factions, finally, total completion, uh, minus Xingjie Island, of course. Oh, do I not do it? There we go. That's really dangerous with the escorting. Wow. Almost lost them for a second. I'm sorry, but I cannot permit you to enter. Yeah, I already did that. Let's go. Yes, I'm ready. Yes. Okay. Should be a cutscene.
been a long time since we bested Shiro. I was thinking the same thing. I fear his return will not be long in coming. You worry about things that will never come to pass. Shiro is still a threat. The affliction will return. Nonsense! Shiro is gone once again, and with him the affliction. You should know you were there! Yes, but... Shiro is in the past. We must be mindful of the present. The Luxons are the biggest threat to us, Kurzix, and it is to them we must shift our focus. Baron Vesberg! Baron Vesberg! What news? Baron, the Luxons have breached the forest. They're on the march as we speak! <laughs> To the Eternal Grove! Protect the Forever Trees! Kill the Luxon invaders! Here we go. So this is very similar to the Galahatchery one. In Galahatchery, we were defending the turtles. Where is it at? Defending the turtles from Kurzik juggernauts. Now we're going to be defending our juggernauts from Luxon turtles. Uh, interesting how things have changed. But let's go ahead and turn in this quest. This is a pretty brutal mission, if I remember correctly. Look at that. We're already back up to 6,000. Uh, this is a pretty brutal mission, and you're going to have to see it next episode. So please stay tuned. The final completion of, of the uh, fa Factions storybook. I think if you go through here... The cool thing about this book also is it summarizes everything. This would be a good thing to read... Maybe, uh, maybe, uh, for lore wise or something. Be kind of fun. Make a video of reading these. I really like this edition. Anyway, it's time to end, end the video. What am I doing? All right, stay tuned. Uh, next time you see me, I'm going to be doing the Eternal Grove mission. Until then, peace.